Hello, welcome to Blue Fact. Please like this video and subscribe Blue Facts. Here is my story. My wife cheated with two men at her friend's bachelorette party. It was my wife's closest friend's bachelorette party. They had organized a weekend trip to the cottage and my wife really wanted to be a part of it. I trusted her completely and had no suspicions whatsoever. The evening before I left, she walked into our bedroom as I was getting ready for bed. She sat down next to me on the bed, and it was evident that something was weighing on her mind. She shared, I thank you for letting me go. I just want to have fun and be around my friend who was getting married in a few weeks. I replied, sure, enjoy. After that, she leaned over to kiss me, and we went to bed. The next morning, she left early with her friends. Throughout the weekend, we communicated rather infrequently, which was not unusual. But we exchanged numerous text messages. By Sunday evening, she sent me a text saying that she was heading home and would be within a few hours. When she returned, she looked like she had a good time and was very happy. The next day, I went to work, and she went to her friend's house to help with wedding preparations. In the weeks that followed, my wife set aside time to help her friend organize her wedding. She would finish work and go to her friend's house for a few hours. This happened several days a week. And then, on one of the working days while in the office, I learned that some colleagues were discussing a video that had surfaced of what had happened during the bachelorette party at the cottage. After becoming curious about their conversation, I learned that a video had surfaced online that allegedly depicted a woman getting intimate with two men. At the time, I did not know who the woman was. In the following days, I began to hear more and more people talking about the video, which piqued my curiosity. One evening after work, my wife still hadn't gotten home yet. At this time, I began searching on the computer, visiting various websites in an attempt to find the video that had become the topic of conversation. Unfortunately, my search yielded no results. A few hours later, my wife came home, and I asked her about the video. She had a confused look on her face. She knew nothing about the video and seemed genuinely surprised. I smiled and asked, what on earth happened in that cottage? Unfortunately, I didn't get to see my wife's reaction. The next day, when I arrived at work and took my seat at my desk, a co-worker immediately approached me and asked, listen, did you watch that video? I admitted that I hadn't had time to look it up. He retrieved his phone and proceeded to display the video, the very same one that had been the subject of discussion. I was utterly taken aback, struggling to process what was unfolding before my eyes. The visuals were astonishing. Four partially unclothed men strolled in the footage. They entered the room, and the women in the background shouted happily. Then the men started taking turns dancing in front of the gathered women. At first, I laughed, thinking that was the end of the festivities. However, the continuation of the video took me by surprise. It showed a moment when one of the men came in extremely close to a particular woman. As it turned out, it was my wife. My entire demeanor changed dramatically. The laughter disappeared, replaced by a somber mood. The video showed the moment when my wife started touching him. Then, another man came up from behind and started touching her as well. The situation escalated from there. Then one of the men lifted my wife on his shoulder and carried her into the next room, and the second man followed him. I was completely stunned. My jaw dropped slowly. Both men left the room, followed by my wife. She had a big smile on her face, and she was unclothed at this point. The videotape ended, leaving me in a state of shock. I sat there trying to make sense of what I had seen, not knowing what to do next. I paused to collect my thoughts. I subsequently asked my co-worker if he could share the videotape with me, and he agreed. I decided not to tell my wife about what I had witnessed. I was filled with anger and brokenness. The fact that she had become intimate with these two strange men without any problem, as if nothing had happened, and I didn't matter, left me in despair. The rest of the workday, I performed my duties like a zombie, and my thoughts were a mess. I couldn't even gather my thoughts. After a while, however, I managed to regain some semblance of composure. I made a few phone calls. One of these calls was made to a friend of mine who happens to be a lawyer. I asked him to advise me on the matter, explaining the situation. He advised me to take the necessary time to consider my next steps and said that if he were me. 
he would probably file for divorce. Following the brief discussion with my friend, I reached out to a divorce lawyer to gather information about the options available to me given my wife's infidelity, as well as to understand her potential entitlements. During the conversation, I provided details about our situation, specifically that we didn't have any children but jointly owned a house with an outstanding mortgage, and both of us were employed. The attorney informed me that if I intended to remain in the house, I could initiate divorce proceedings and attempt to have my wife vacate the premises. However, he cautioned that this process could be protracted, and success wasn't guaranteed. After consulting with two separate attorneys, I arrived at a conclusion. I resolved to proceed with divorcing my wife and reached a decision to file the divorce papers the following day. No explanation she could offer would justify her actions, and I suspected she might not even be aware of the video. I spent that night restless, unable to sleep due to the overwhelming turmoil within me. The video played on a loop in my mind, and I grappled with the incredulity of my wife's actions. The following morning, I awoke around 6 a.m. Sleep eluded me, prompting me to rise, dress, and head to work. My wife remained asleep, and I refrained from addressing the situation with her. It's worth noting that there has been no intimacy between us, nor have I made any advances toward her following the exposure to that video. Upon reaching my workplace, I informed my boss that I required some time off. Although he sensed something amiss, he respected my privacy and refrained from prying. I then headed home during the hours my wife was at work. I commenced packing some of her belongings along with other items. A couple of suitcases were meticulously prepared and placed by the door. After completing the packing, I bided my time until around 11.30 in the morning. I retrieved my phone, located a link to the video, and forwarded it to my wife. It was evident that she promptly read the message. I initiated a FaceTime call. I communicated my decision clearly. I informed her of my desire for a divorce, disclosing that I had already initiated the filing process. Furthermore, I conveyed that she needed to collect her belongings. She abruptly terminated the call but called back about five minutes later, saying she was on her way home. I informed her that when she arrived, I would be upstairs in my office, and I didn't want to see her. When she got home, with tears in her eyes, she asked me where I got that video. I said, I'm not going to explain anything to you. Just leave. In response, she adamantly stated, I'm not going anywhere. This is my home too. She further stated, we're married, you can't just kick me out. In response, I firmly stated, our marriage will not last long now. Frustrated, she dialed her best friend's number, explained in a shaky voice the situation, and my intention to kick her out of the house, and that I had the videotape. Her best friend offered to come over immediately and promised to organize legal assistance. After finishing the conversation, my wife hurriedly packed her bags and left shortly thereafter. Her best friend contacted me, asking why I wanted to kick my wife out of the house. In response, I immediately sent her a link to the video that I assumed my wife had already shown her, although obviously, that was not the case. After viewing the video, her best friend informed me of her intention to engage an attorney on my wife's behalf, and insisted that I refrain from further interfering in my wife's affairs. I asserted that the matter was a private affair solely concerning my wife, and myself, not involving her. Additionally, I disclosed that I had already initiated divorce proceedings. Over the subsequent days, my wife inundated me with texts, calls, pleas, and voicemails. However, I chose not to respond. Eventually, I received a call from my wife's legal representative. He inquired, do you have an attorney? I immediately provided him with the necessary information. He then thanked me and ended the conversation. A few days passed, and I received a packet of divorce-related documents from my wife's attorney. I scrupulously went through the papers and faxed them to my attorney. I also sent my attorney an email notifying him of the receipt of the documents. A few days later, I received a call from my lawyer. I was curious about my future ex-wife's demands, so I asked him. He outlined the essence of her claim. 
She was demanding a half share of the entire estate, including the house and one of the cars. Unexpectedly, she did not ask for alimony. I informed the lawyer that her father was wealthy. He owned four hotels and several other businesses, which convinced me that she would have adequate financial support. I then told the attorney that I wanted her to vacate the house and remove her name from all joint documents. My attorney cautioned that this might be difficult to accomplish, but assured me that he would explore options to resolve the problem. Several weeks down the line, I received a call that worked from my lawyer bearing unfortunate news. He conveyed that due to her name being on the property deed, I couldn't simply evict her from the house. Moreover, given her claim to half of the house, it seemed probable that selling it might be the necessary course of action. I expressed my reluctance, stating that I cherished the house and wasn't keen on selling it. This house was of great importance to me as it was our first home together. My attorney acknowledged that the decision ultimately rested with me but warned me that if I decided not to sell the house, a legal battle would likely ensue. I was determined not to sell the house and informed my attorney that I intended to contest the title. After a few weeks, I received an official divorce notice, which meant that the lawsuit had begun and a trial date had been set. I arrived at the courthouse, and so did my wife, each of us accompanied by our attorneys. The judge addressed my wife, asking what she wanted. She stated her desire for an equal division of property, including the house and one automobile. The judge then turned his attention to me, inviting my attorney to state my preferences and intentions. My attorney stated that I was seeking a divorce and wanted her out of the house, and to remove her name from the joint documents. The judge turned to both attorneys and then shifted her gaze to us, asking if there is anything we can agree on. My wife and I exchanged glances and simultaneously shook our heads in mutual disagreement. The judge went on to explain that in Alabama, a state that allows for both no-fault and fault divorce, adultery falls into the latter category. Addressing my wife directly, the female judge stated, Young lady, you have committed adultery, and on the basis of that guilt, I will grant your husband a divorce on the grounds of adultery. The judge then looked at my wife and continued, Ma'am, I am ordering you to vacate the house within 30 days. However, given your joint mortgage, I have no right to interfere in this matter. You will have to resolve it directly with your mortgage lender. The judge further added, Sir, she retains the option to move back into the house if she so chooses. It's considered the marital home, and she has a legal claim to it. However, should she decide to move back in, she will have 30 days to vacate the premises. Again shifting attention to me, the judge asserted, Furthermore, I am directing you to continue making mortgage payments until the mortgage is settled, whether through full repayment or sale. The judge asked if there are any additional issues that need to be addressed, and my attorney stated that my wife wants one of the cars. The judge then shifted his gaze to me and asked if that's accurate. I confirmed to the judge that it is true and stated that she can indeed get one of the cars, but must pay for it herself. The judge then granted her request, allowing her to get the car. After these issues were resolved, the judge finalized the divorce. Approximately one week post-divorce, my ex-wife conveyed her decision via a text message. She expressed her disinterest in returning to the house and instead sought her share of the house's equity, proposing to transfer ownership of the property to me. I promptly replied to her text, stating that our cumulative equity amounted to $30,000. I also indicated my willingness to provide her with half of that sum once the refinancing process was successfully completed. After adhering to all necessary legal obligations in completing the refinancing procedure, I upheld my commitment by transferring to her half of the modest equity held in our former home. Several months later, my wife's father sadly passed away, bequeathing her an inheritance of $3 million. It became evident that she no longer required any financial assistance from me. Even prior to her father's demise, her financial stability was unquestionable, given his substantial support. Despite her attempts to reach out through calls and texts, I made a conscious decision not to respond. While it might have been suggested that I reconsider our situation due to her newfound wealth, I remained resolute in my choice not to reconcile. My attitude towards her had changed, and I didn't have the same feelings for her as I used to. To this day, the identity of the person who shot the video during that weekend at the cottage remains unknown to both her closest friend and my ex-wife. After all these tumultuous events, I am a free man. 
As a man in his 40 seconds, I am absolutely grateful that she and I did not have children. Thank you for listening to the story to the end, and if you liked it, please support us with a like as well as subscribe to our channel. Write in the comments what you think about the story.